In this slide, what I'm going to do is to derive Darcy Weisbach equation for a round pipe, for round pipes. Perfect. So as you can see, we have a pipe um, on the left-hand side photo, and we have selected the control volume. The pipe is angled, and the angle is alpha over here. Um, the control volume is a cylindrical shape control volume with the length of delta L and diameter of D. There are two directions that we have selected. S direction is parallel to the center line of the pipe, and R direction is radius direction. Now, we are going to single out the control volume and put all the forces that are acting on the control volume on it. We're going to start with pressure forces because they are the most obvious forces. Left-hand side pressure force would be P sub 1 or pressure at section 1 times cross-sectional area of the cylinder. And P sub 2A is pressure force at section 2 or the right end of the cylinder. Another force that we need to consider is shear stress force, this force basically. This force is as a result of the friction between the walls of the pipe and the fluid. And shear stress force is equal to shear stress to zero times surface area of the cylinder. And you might ask, how do we calculate surface area of the cylinder? It's easy. It would be the circumference of the circle times length of the cylinder. So if I want to write A, A would be equal to pi times D, which is the circumference of the circle times delta L, right? And as a result of this, then um, the force, the shear stress force or F shear would be equal to um, I will write it over here, tau zero times pi times d times delta L. Perfect. Uh, the other force that is acting on this uh, control volume is weight. And because our cylinder is angled, then we will have two components for weight. One component would be in the direction of S direction, which would be W sine of alpha, and the other component is this component, which is W cosine of alpha. Perfect. Now we have all forces. Whenever forces are involved, and in order to derive Darcy Weisbach equation for round pipes, we need to write momentum equation. I've already written momentum e equation um, in S direction for you. Now let's analyze momentum equation term by term. The first thing on the right-hand side of the equation is changes of mass of control volume times velocity of control volume over t, over changes of time. Uh, since the mass of control volume does not change over time, and the velocity of control volume does not change over time because our flow is steady, then this term is zero. Also, because the diameter of the pipe is constant, then the velocity at section input or section one is equal to the velocity at section output or O or section two, then these two terms cancel each other out. So in other words, what we have is summation of forces in S direction is equal to zero. So the only thing that I need to do is to write down the force equilibrium and um, see if I can find HF or head loss. And that would be my Darcy Weisbach equation. So let's write down all the forces that are acting on this control volume. The first type of force, as I told you, is pressure force. So F pressure. Um, the other type of force would be uh, force as a result of shear stress, and because the direction of shear stress force is opposite direction of positive S direction, I'm going to include a negative sign, F shear, and then minus F weight. Why negative sign? Because W sine of alpha has the opposite direction of positive S direction. And this should be equal to zero. Just to remind you, this is our positive S direction. 
Perfect. Now that I have this equation, all the forces, I'm going to replace the value of forces um, in this equation. So pressure force, we have two pressure forces. I'm going to write them together. So it would be P1 minus P2 and then cross-sectional area of the cylinder, which would be pi divided by 4 diameter to the power 2. This is the pressure force. Minus shear stress force, I already calculated for you and written it for you. It would be tau 0 shear stress pi uh, diameter times delta L minus weight force and weight force would be because let me write it over here actually i know that weight of the cylinder is equal to gamma times volume of the cylinder right so i can write down w over here it would be gamma times volume would be cross-sectional area times delta l so it would be pi divided by four times d to the power two times delta l and I'm going to replace that and put it in the equation over here. So W would be gamma pi divided by 4 d to the power 2 delta L times sine of alpha because we need the S direction version of weight. That is equal to 0. Perfect. So now I'm going to do a little bit of reorganization and write this equation in uh, terms that are familiar to me. So this equation can be written as, I'm going to write pressure at section 1. Um, you need to pay attention that we can uh, replace sine of alpha with its equivalent. So take a look at this triangle over here. From trigonometry you can conclude that sine of alpha is equal to delta z in other words z2 minus z1 divided by delta l and delta l is simply the length of the cylinder right so when you replace that then I can over here write plus gamma z1 minus p2 plus gamma z2 is equal to 4 delta L tau sub 0 divided by D. All right. Um, this equation is based on reorganization of the uh, force equilibrium that I've written for you. The reason that I have written this equation like this, because I already know these terms right these terms represent what represents piezometric pressure at section one and piezometric pressure at section two right and i know that based on previous slide i know that um, piezometric pressure at section one minus piezometric pressure at section two represents gamma times hf gamma times uh, head loss right so what i'm going to do right now is um, write the equation like this. So based on what we know over here, HF is equal to four, instead of delta L, because that's the length of the cylinder, I'm just gonna write L. And then to sub zero, D gamma. Okay, so this is the equation that Darcy Weisbach uh, came up with. And in order to have this equation in terms that can be applied to laminar and turbulent flow, what they did is that they multiplied this, these variables by uh, kinetic terms. Density, velocity to the power 2 divided by uh, 2. Again, density velocity to the power 2 divided by 2. So they multiplied this equation by this, and then they reorganized it. Again, reorganized it to come up with some familiar terms. So they came up, the, their reorganization, they came up with three brackets. The first bracket involved four shear stress divided by density, velocity to the power 2 divided by 2. The second bracket was simply length 
of cylinder divided by uh, diameter. And the third bracket was velocity to the power 2 divided by 2g. All right, so they decided to call this term over here F or friction factor. Okay, this term friction factor will take different values for laminar flow and for turbulent flow. But everything else, like length, like diameter, like velocity, you can easily calculate, right? So the only thing that you need to figure out when you are calculating um, head loss or HF, pipe head loss, is friction factor. So uh, they uh, wrote down this equation in a general form and they call it Darcy Weisbach equation. So just to reiterate that equation, I'm gonna write it once more and over here so hf is equal to f which is a friction factor times l over d times velocity to the power 2 divided by 2g this equation that i have written in red with my using my uh, red pen uh, this equation is called darcy hyphen Weisbach equation. And it can be used for both laminar and turbulent flow to calculate head loss. Now, we know about this equation. We need to find out how to calculate F or friction factor for different classifications of flow. And that would be the topic that I'm going to discuss from now on.